Okay, welcome to Network Fundamentals, CET 1600. We're going to talk about networks over the next eight weeks. So before we talk about networks, let's see how we use networks. What do we use networking for? What can we think of? There are several things. We can use it to get weather information if we're traveling. We can do our banking online. We can pay bills. We can move money around in our checking accounts. We can move money into and out of the banking system. We can do photos. We can send photos to people. We can send videos to people. Perfect example of a video is what you're watching right now. This is a little mini lecture on the uses of the uh, of networking. We can shop. Who hasn't used Amazon? Amazon is a wonderful place to get all kinds of stuff. Music, books, electronics, clothes even. Okay, we can send recipes. One of my favorite channels is the Food Network. Food Network, I can get recipes off, off the internet uh, very easily. And another big thing we use networking for, which we're doing right now, is learning. Okay? We can actually use networks to provide education to a lot of people all at the same time. So, let's take a look at some of these options and see how they apply. Okay, as far as education, education becomes more valuable when we use networking because it is current. The education can be adjusted as we discover new things, or as technology changes, we can move the curriculum into that direction. It's also available. All right. It is available 24 by 7. You are no longer restricted to having to learn on an instructor's schedule or on a school schedule. You can actually get onto the network and have your course available to you 24 by 7. We also get more of a consistent quality. If everybody's using the same curriculum across the world, People in India, people in China, people in the United Kingdom are getting the same quality of education as you're getting when we use the Cisco Academy. What else? Also a cost reduction. Okay. So the final item we want to talk about is cost reduction. If I'm taking classes online, I'm not having to travel to a classroom. My company is saving costs by not having to transport me and put me up in a hotel. I'm getting the same education, but I'm getting it online. So this is what networking does for us as far as education. Now what about work? I mentioned the company. My company doesn't have to send me out to do um, education. I can do it from home or I can do it from wherever I happen to be. If I'm in a hotel on business, I can do my education from the hotel. As a matter of fact, that's how I got part of my degree, working from a hotel room while I was traveling for IBM. So work. How does networking affect work? What do we use networking for at work? One of the biggest benefits to a company is the fact that they can have distributed work groups. People that are working together on a project no longer have to meet at the same location. We can have people in Sacramento, we can have people in New York, we can have people in Dallas, all working on the same project 
through networking and have all that information available to them. So the companies actually have a network concept set up where they have what we call an intranet. Now you all know the internet, the internet is a collection of networks across the world. An intranet for a company is the internal network. That's where all their information is located and all their employees and people they deem necessary to get at that information have access to that information. We, they also created an extranet. The extranet is the network that separates their intranet from the internet. The extranet is where customers, suppliers, different people that need some access to the internal documents can get their information without actually compromising the network. Okay, how about work? Everybody, if we just work constantly, we become very dull people. So we also have that play. Oops, if I could write correctly. So how do we use the networking for play? Well, we can obviously use online travel sites to make travel plans. Go see the world through travel. We have online auctions. Online auctions allow us to bid on things and buy merchandise that we wouldn't necessarily go out and buy on our own. We can do it while we're on the network. We can also download music, videos, and we can take that music and videos and send them to a social network. We can send our videos and our music to Facebook, MySpace, if it still exists, I'm not sure if it does, but we can send it to Facebook. Um, we can Twitter people. The music and the videos is becoming a very important uh, part of uh, litigation, if you will. A lot of the uh, music providers are deciding that people are pirating their music, so you just got to be careful of that. But this is some of the examples of how we play using networking. Okay, so all of this information together points to what? Kind of points to one f uh, function of networking that we take advantage of, and that's communication. So let's take a look at communication. What is communication? Communication is nothing more than two people, in my case little stick people, although I'm not a very good artist, but communication is the ability for this person through let's say a drum, and he's got little drumsticks there, to send information to this guy. If this guy also had a little drone, he could send information back to this guy. As you add more people, you get the same communication, but you get a bigger network. Okay, so communication has to do with networking in this way. When these guys communicate using drums, they need to uh, have clear protocols set up, rules, if you will. So the rules of communication become a sender and a receiver must be identified. You have to have a sender and a receiver. We also have to have a method of communication. Method of communication here is a drum. Okay, that's how they're sending information. In modern times we would say we either have uh, telephone conversations where we send letters or some other way of establishing communication and how we're going to do it. The other thing we need is a common language. Don't 
does no good if this guy is beating his drum in Swahili and this guy is thinking in terms of, uh, I don't know, old Polish language or whatever. Doesn't work. Okay? We also have to have some kind of timings that are agreed upon. In other words, if I'm sending a drum message, you don't be sending a drum message at the same time. That does not work. And we also have to be able to have acknowledgments. Okay? Did you receive my message? I received your message. Did you receive my message? So this is the rules, if you will. Sender and receiver, a method of communication, common language timings, and acknowledgement that the human race has developed for communication. Okay, so how does that apply to networking? We still use networking to communicate. All right, so let's look at it now. Now we're, we're at the point where we're saying, okay, I understand what communication is. I understand that I do use the Internet on a regular basis. Now I need to know what exactly is a network. So let's define a network. A network is, in its simplest terms, a device. In this case, it's a PC communicating with another device. Okay? So a network, at its simplest form, requires devices, minimum two, talking across a medium. This could be, uh, let's say, a Cat5 cable. Okay, so the devices are talking over a medium. And what are they communicating back and forth with each other? They're communicating a message. Information. We're sending information back and forth to each other. And how do we control how that information goes back and forth? Same way we did with communicating between humans. We use protocols or rules. Okay? This is the simplest definition of a network. Two or more devices communicating across a medium. That communication consists of a message or information using rules or protocols. So some of the devices that you are familiar with, you're already familiar with PCs. Okay? So our network are made up of PCs. PCs or any kind of end device. Oops, boy, planned that well. PCs and devices are responsible for originating information. We also have other devices in the network. This being the simplest case of a network, we also have devices, if we're going much farther distances, we have switches. Well, that didn't work real well. Let me try that again. We have switches, routers, okay, and other devices that get the information from one side of the network to another side, from a sender to a receiver. We're going to talk a lot about these devices over the next eight weeks. And if you come back for CET 1610 routing protocols, we're going to be talking a lot about these devices, routers. CET 1615, we're going to talk a lot about switches. And CET 2620, the capstone, if you will, CCNA 4, we're going to talk about this whole network concept over a wide area. Okay, so we've got the devices. The medium. The medium, if you look at your computer at your desk, it's got a Cat5 cable attached to it. The cable goes to a switch. The switch goes to a router. 
That's how we get information out. So we can use copper cabling to connect these devices. We can also use fiber optic. So now we have uh, the ability to use light pulses as a medium. We can also use radio waves. We can use radio waves wirelessly. We can communicate through the ethernet, through the ether, not the ethernet, through the ether. We can send radio waves uh, using 802.11 technology, not important right now. Just understand that there are several mediums we can use to get the message across. The message is the information that these guys, the end devices, create. Information is always created or originating from an end device. Very important to remember. Switches and routers do not originate information. And that information crosses the medium to the devices using rules. The big rule on the internet, TCP IP, Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol. This is the rule that drives the internet. We also have applications that use protocols. We have HTTP. You know that little funny HTTP colon backslash backslash or slash slash that you put at the front of your URLs when you're typing something in your internet browser? This is a protocol. This defines a protocol. Hypertext transfer protocol. It's how web servers talk to web clients. We also have SMTP, Simple Mail Transport Protocol. This is how email servers talk to each other. So we use protocols to get information across a medium to devices. This is the definition of a network. This is how we communicate across a network. This is the network that we use for learning, for education, for work, for play, for just general quality of life. This is what we're going to be talking about over the next eight weeks. Thanks for your attention.